Hi everyone. So welcome back to this another module in Oracle Identity in Access Management. And in this module, we are going to look at how to install and configure Oracle Identity in Access Management. You can use this method to install and configure either Oracle Access Manager, Oracle Identity Manager, or other Identity in Access Management products like Adaptive Access Manager, Identity Federation, identity or entitlement server and so on also oracle mobile security suite so before we proceed let's have a look at what topics we are going to cover um, on on this particular topic so so we are going to first look at oracle identity manager and access manager installation overview then we are going to look at idm lcm which is identity management life cycle management tool then we are going to look at manual installation. This means there are two ways to install and configure identity and access management. One is IDM LCM tool and second is manual installation. We are going to focus on manual because I've seen a couple of issues in IDM LCM. And as far as I heard last year that Oracle is not focusing anymore in this IDM LCM tool because of the limitations this tool has in terms of the way you can deploy because there are a lot of permutations and combinations and we're going to look at that. Then we are going to look at high level installation steps and then we are going to look at detailed installation steps also in the membership portal and below somewhere in this module you will also see at the end a step by step activity guide to install and configure Oracle Access Manager or Identity Manager. So let's look at installation overview and as I said uh, just a minute ago that when you install Oracle Identity Manager or Oracle Access Manager you have two ways. One is a automated deployment and you use a tool called IDM LCM that was introduced recently or 11 GR2 as far as I know it was introduced in 11 GR2. However, it started with some it was pretty nice feature. It was good tool to begin with. But as the complications in, increase and with bigger customers, there are a lot of permutations combinations as I said in which you can deploy and we are going to see all of those It tool relays that uh, that you will always have some reservations or limitations with this tool or it's not as flexible as you want to or you encounter some issues that's my personal experience and that's why i use a manual method other reason i'm a little bit biased towards manual method is then i because i have a bigger control i know if things fail uh, because i'm doing it manually i know each step what i'm doing and if it fails i know where to look for or what has failed whereas idm lcm then i'm relying on the a tool writer to tell me where it failed and I have little visibility behind the scene what it's doing I have to then otherwise reverse engineer that but for for completeness we are going to tell everything and if you have a very simple implementation then you might pick IDM LCM tool or my preference always is manual so I know what I'm doing and how I'm doing things so IDM tool it's used for automated deployment so you you tell this tool things in upfront we you, you give some configuration values and it's going to do all those configurations for you you can also use this tool to patch an identity management environment and you can also use this tool to upgrade an identity in access management having said that all these things which are like automated deployment patch or not automated but deployment patching and upgrade you can also do from a manual method also, this IDM tool also provides a environment health check or a utility to do the prerequisite text checks before installation. And also you can do some verifications after installation. So I think that utility is quite handy. You can use that to do the prerequisite before and the post installation verification using that. Again, you can use the manual method as well for prerequisite and post verification purpose. Now, coming back to the deployment. There, the IDM LCM tools support these following topologies and there could be more than these topologies. So one is Oracle Identity Manager topology in which only Oracle Identity Manager is configured, which was a governance part. That was, it doesn't, that means you don't want Oracle Access Manager. You don't want second, which is OMSS, stands for Oracle Mobile Security Suite. So Oracle acquired another company back, I think in 2014-15, and later uh, that was uh, they were the leaders in the mobile security they had mobile applications 
and I forgot the name of uh, that company, but that later rebranded as Oracle Mobile Security Suite. So you can so you can use it just alone Oracle Identity Manager, or if you have an implementation where you have Oracle Access Manager with Oracle Mobile Security Suite topology, or you have a third topology where you have Oracle Identity Manager, Access Manager, and Oracle Mobile Security Suite topology. I'm going to explain you what are these topologies with the diagram and a little bit more explanation on that. So in Oracle Identity Manager topology, what you have is a identity governance web logic domain. And hopefully by now, you know what is a web logic domain. In the module two, we had a bonus module where we looked at Oracle Fusion middleware. And in that, we said there is an admin server and managed server. So this topology has only relate things required for identity governance where that was first part in identity and access management three pillars i said there's identity governance there's access management and also directory services again we've covered and explained this entire identity and access management in module one so if you're if you're not yet clear go back to module one and listen there again so in identity manager you have a domain where you get one admin server which is represented by here and you get three managed servers. First managed server is Oracle Identity Manager Managed Server. Second is SOA. And in that module, first module, I said SOA is required for workflows. So SOA is mandatory because Oracle Identity Manager workflows are, are delegated to SOA suite. So you have two managed servers. You also have the BI Publisher, which is a component in Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. So this BI Publisher Managed Server is used for reporting compliance report reports for oracle identity manager so in oracle identity manager topology you get one web logic domain with three managed servers and one admin server and you also need a database to store the data so you have a database repository and on top you have oracle http server or web server it's an optional component if you want otherwise the as i said in uh, in module two about oracle fusion middleware each of these servers, which is an admin server, as well as these managed servers, they all have their own listeners, HTTP listener. Admin server has a listener, which is 7001. Oracle Identity Manager has a listener port, which is 1,000, 14,000. Uh, SOA has a listener, which is 8,001. And BI Publisher has, I think, 778, uh, or something like that. So each has a HTTP listener you can connect directly. Or if you want, you can put a HTTP server in front because of the reasons I said earlier in the architecture module that uh, that everything should be front-ended by a web server so that or a proxy layer for HTTP. So this is a Oracle Identity Manager only topology. So this is one topology of deployment. Now you can have Oracle Access Manager only topology or Oracle Access Manager Oracle Mobile Security Suite topology. And in our Oracle Access Manager training or EBS OEM training, this is the topology we are going to deploy. So similar to Oracle Identity Governance, you have a WebLogic domain. And in this WebLogic domain, you get a one admin server and you get few three managed servers again, but this time one managed server for Oracle Access Manager, second more managed server for um, mobile uh, X AMA for mobile suite and another mobile suite. One is for policy definition and one is for implementation so these two at the bottom you see for oracle mobile security suite so this is a another web logic domain now similar to oracle identity governance you need a database for this and this will store your oracle access manager ops schema or the policy schema and and metadata and we'll see all those things when we come to installation and configuration what is stored in this so you get the Oracle mobile, uh, all the database. And then if you are using um, mobile security, there is a co component called mobile security access pro proxy. And again, we are not going to cover that in, in this, uh, in this uh, training mobile security. However, in 11G R2 patch set three onwards, if you install or in, in this 11G R2, even though you don't need mobile security, you still, it will configure automatically for you. So make sure that you and uh, when I come to that point, I'll explain you in detail that even though you don't want mobile security, you still have to select or it will still be configured for you. So we'll 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 come to that. It's one of those little nuggets which you'll see. So you get a 
web logic domain where you get all this and you also will be deploying a oracle http server with the web gate now in the module 2 where we were looking at oracle access manager architecture and those who are part of if you're listening this in oracle identity manager and you may not come across or you may not understand it so there's a uh, another training which is oracle access manager where we're going to cover or we have covered this web gate if you're listening this in oracle access manager or e-business suite integration you know that what is the web gate you know uh, what is this module wl ohs so you deploy a web gate which is policy enforcement point this is all good but you also then deploy a ldap server which ldap server could be a microsoft active directory or a oracle unified directory or an oracle internet directory and what you tell you integrate oracle access manager so that password validation happens via this ldap server and this ldap server might need a database so if it's oid then you might it might need an oid database if it's a oud oud has a java database berkeley java database if you have an active directory it might be a microsoft sql server database or if you are running oracle uh, if you're integrating e-business suite with oracle access manager then you must have either oid or oud we'll cover that in e-business suite integration again we'll go into the topic so what you do in this topology you have a web logic domain and in this web logic domain you will have a oracle access manager one admin server and three managed servers and this oracle you will also deploy an oracle internet directory or ldap server with in its own repository and you tell oracle access manager to connect to this oid or this ldap server for username and password validation ads covered in oracle access manager architecture module that by default this oracle access manager will has its own user repository which is embedded ldap server of weblogic weblogic's embedded ldap server so we'll cover that or so that's not good fit for an enterprise class ldap server so that's why you delegate that onto this oid server so this is about om and oms topology so this is topology number two then you have a third topology which is the more common which is oracle identity manager and oracle access manager topology and this is more common in which you have this part we already looked into earlier in oracle access management topology and you also have a oracle identity governance included however what you see is this identity governance has its own user repository and again as i said we have an oracle identity manager or identity governance training where we go deep dive into this identity governance and what is ldap sync so if you're listening this training in oracle access manager um probably if you want to have a look at oracle identity governance we cover this if you're listening in oracle identity governance we'll cover that about the ldap sync and other things why you need ldap sync so any users that you create user management oracle's identity governance primary management user management is identity governance when you create when you create a user identity governance it will store into identity governance repository which is under user stable and you also sync it to automatically into the ldap server which is oid or oud in our case and you sync into this so that when a user try to log in through uh, they will log in via this user so user management is happening here but ultimately that user will sync between this repository and this repository through a concept called ldap sync so this is a, another topology now the advantage of this topology is that any password management for oracle access manager will be delegated to here so the password management for oracle access manager uh, password functionality will come into here when we go into the file system of oracle access manager we have a dedicated module then i'm going to show you where these configurations are where we say um, that it's delegated authentication is delegated to sorry the password management of oracle access manager is delegated to oracle identity manager we'll see that configuration we'll also show you how uh, where do you see uh, that oracle access manager has delegated its authentication to oid we'll see those as well in omoid so this is a another topology where you have everything but Oracle identity governance is talking to the LDAP server, same LDAP server using a component of functionality called LDAP sync. This Oracle access manager is talking to the LDAP server. So this is another topology where you can have, now interesting thing is you can have two domains or you can combine everything into one single domain. This whole thing 
uh, you can combine into one single weblogic domain where you have one admin server but, but multiple instead of three three in each you can have six managed servers and one admin server or you can have one domain of here and one domain of here and two domain is much better so this is called as split domain so there is a single domain versus split domain so with so this is a split domain where domains are split across governance and access management and this is much better designed because then you can upgrade this weblogic domain and this weblogic server than this weblogic domain and this weblogic server so this is about oracle access manager and oim topology yeah so this is all in a nutshell about the topology so let me do a quick recap on uh, what we have covered so far uh, so we started with the agenda then we looked at installation we said automated and manual then we looked at what this idm lcm tool is for and then topologies in topologies point of view oracle identity manager topology next is oracle access manager topology and then combined oam oim topology and next we are going to look at then with this context we are going to talk about the installation and we are going to first install everything and then we can decide whether we want to go with just oracle identity manager just oracle access manager or we want to go with both we'll explain you both but in your hands-on we are going on, only going to cover individually oracle identity manager or oracle access manager if anyone wants to do the advanced integration let us know and then we'll work on the more advanced integration point as well